Today I'm going to go through um, how to thread your sewing machine, um, how to use your sewing machine and some common problems that you're going to come across. Um, first of all I'm going to show you how to thread the upper thread. The upper thread is a large reel of cotton here. So there'll be a spindle here that you put the thread on and normally uh, something that will hold it in place. It doesn't matter which way the cotton is coming off of the, the uh, reel, either way is fine. And then it will go under some form of hook at the top of the machine. It doesn't do anything, it's just a hook. So sometimes it's visible, sometimes it's hidden on a, under a piece of plastic. And then you go down the front through the tension uh, wheel at the front. Uh, there are just two discs inside that are going to hold the thread and give it some tension. And then you go down, often the machines have arrows to help you. And then you're going to put it through the hook. Now, if you cannot see the hook here, you need to turn, this is called the flywheel at the side of the machine. You need to turn this towards you and you will see that it will be revealed, it will come to its highest position. Some machines it's only as low as that, um, but you can still get your cotton in. But some machines it comes right up. You need to get the cotton right in. Um, a common problem is just putting it in uh, sort of like that and it drops down behind. So make sure it's actually in, in that hook. Some machines it's just a hole that you thread it through. And you go back down the front and then there'll be a hook near the needle. There's normally one each side because um, if ever you want to use a twin needle you need two threads which will go either side and there's one that side, one that side for each needle. Doesn't matter which one you use at this stage, either is fine. And then some machines will have needle threaders. Uh, I'll show you, uh, when I show you a computerized machine, I'll show you how to use one of those. And other machines, you'll just thread it manually front to back. Now, the easiest way is to put the pressure foot down. There's a lever under the machine here that lowers the pressure foot up and down. So lower it down and then Put your finger behind the needle to help you see the hole and hopefully you'll be able to thread it then like that so that's threaded and then lift the pressure foot up and then put the cotton through your foot and just leave it like that the next thing is to put the bobbin in uh, but obviously at the moment we have no thread on the bobbin so first of all, I'm going to show you how to wind the bobbin. So bobbins are these days universal. That means they fit all machines. Um, you can get expensive ones. Well, uh, ones that are of the make of the machine, like Alna, Singer, Brother, Janome. Or you can buy cheaper generic ones that are a little bit more brittle and plasticky. There's nothing wrong with using the cheaper ones, except sometimes when you're working on very fine fabric, it's good to use one of your own machine or a better made one. It just fits that slightly bit better and it can solve some of the issues you may have with very delicate fabrics. But generally speaking, you can use any of the universal bobbins. So you'll notice that there's some holes in the bobbin and that is to put the thread through so you can hold the thread while it winds. Or you can just wind it round a few times manually, it doesn't really matter. So uh, it goes on the spindle, as you can see. That's the only reason that that's for, is to wind the bobbin. So we're going to put that on the spindle and it clicks on. Then I'm going to have to unthread the machine to, to wind this bobbin. And then you see this little, it's actually a little tension disc on the top here. That's just used to wind the bobbin and we don't use it for any other reason. And there is a little diagram on the top of this machine to show you doing it. Um, and it just goes through those discs. Can you see? And again, it's two little tension discs held together to give, to give the thread tension. So it's no longer running completely free. And then, like I say, we can wind it round manually a few times. Or you can actually use the hole. I'll show you how to do it. There's, there's lots of... Um, holes you can use and you thread it from the inside out and then you can just hold the thread like this while it winds um, and then you click it across now if you press the foot now 
the needle is going to go up and down it will wind the bobbin but you don't want your needle to go up and down while you're doing this it's not good for the machine to have nothing no fabric in it so there's always a way that you can disengage the needle now some machines will do it automatically when you click across but other machines are manual and in this case it's manual and we need to disengage the needle the way that we do this is we pull the flywheel out like this some machines you unscrew but it'll be either or and you'll see now that when i press the foot the the nothing's happening with the needle i'm just going to cut that end off now it's wound a little bit and now i can fill that up completely it will stop when it's full it just hits this little white plastic um, stopper and stops winding so you don't need to worry about going too fast you should see it winding nice and evenly if it's not doing that then stop and start again i'm just going to fill it right up Can you see it's not winding anymore once it does that click it back across don't forget to put your flywheel back in otherwise the needle's not going to go back so put the flywheel back and you'll see it engages again take your bobbin off cut the thread you've probably got a cutter there you can use and that's now very nicely wound cut that end off if it's it might get caught in just to be sure so to insert the bobbin this is a top loading machine so there's a little clear plastic uh, lid and there's a little black um, button really that you push across it's got a little arrow so you push it to the right and that pops off now with the top loading machine the bobbin goes in with the cotton coming off the bobbin anti-clockwise that's very important because if you put it in clockwise the tension won't be the same it's it'll still work but it's very subtly different and it does make a difference so always remember to put your bobbin in anti-clockwise you drop it in and then there's a little slot there um, at about seven o'clock that you just put the cotton through there's a little arrow there as well to show you and that's all you do you just leave it like that and then we're going to i'm going to re-thread the upper thread because we've got to collect the bobbin so I'm just going to repeat what I've just shown you okay, put it through the foot. and then I'm just going to hold the upper thread with my left hand and with my right hand I'm going to make a stitch and you do that by turning the flywheel towards you. Now, you can see the hook's in its highest position, and that means it's the end of a stitch. So if I turn the flywheel towards me, you can see that this will go down, the needle goes down, and you will start to see a thread coming across the bobbin here. You can't see it at the moment very well, but it's just a piece of thread, you can see it coming across. You keep going until your hook is in its highest position again, and basically you've done a complete stitch and if you look if i just pull the upper thread i can see a loop here and i just pull this loop and that brings through the bobbin thread for me now you should be able to see a thread going diagonally across the top of your bobbin if you can't see that you need to do it again because you should see that visible thread but providing you can see it and they're both running free you can uh, put them through your foot towards the back and then you put your little bobbin case back on. It just goes some little uh, swabbit things. You just push them in and click it down. Cut your threads off so that they're nice and neat. And um, then you're ready to sew.